Africa. Good day. Welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I'm your host for today, Jacques Kingston Compton. With me today, I have Director of Cons the Consumer Affairs Department, Mr. Guillaume Simon, and former President of the National Consumers Association, uh, Mr. Hubert James. We'll be talking about their respective organizations. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start off by uh, Mr. Simon. Why don't you explain what is the role of the Consumer Affairs Department? Okay, Jix. Uh, the Consumer Affairs Department was really established sometime around 1997, thereabout. Um, essentially, it's uh, uh, for greater protection to consumers, to champion the cause of the consumer. Previously, we had a department, what was called the, the Price Control Department. And this department was actually limited in scope. Um, and it, there, is, there became the need to broaden the scope of the department to be more encapsula encapsulating of the areas which impact the consumer. Mm -hmm. um, as you will appreciate, with trade, at the, if we open up our borders, we get a, a flood of products coming in from all over mm -hmm. the, the, the globe. Consumers will be will more exposed to uh, products and services coming in out of non-traditional markets. So there became the need now to offer that greater level of protection to consumers. Could you clarify a little bit on what you mean by non-traditional? Okay, previously our markets were, were goods were coming out of our markets out of maybe England or the US. You have uh, Latin America, you have Asian countries. We trade with all around the globe right now. And a myriad of, a, a number of products were actually coming into the market and um, the issue of standards, the issue of qual um, quality of products, all of those became uh, um, concerns that government recognized that they need to put mechanisms in place to protect the consumer. Mm -hmm. And Mr. James, could you talk a little bit about your organization? <coughs> well, the, the National Consumer Association was, was formed to exactly do what, what Mr. Simon have said, because to protect the consumer, give them their rights, because Long ago, did they, have, they had no right, so you buy something and it was the whims and fancy of the business place where they want to change it for you if it's not good or well else you have to accept what to do. Mm -hmm. So that propelled the, the formation of the National mm -hmm. Consumer Association, which we started in, in, in 2002. We started that thing with Andrew and Tua and a whole set of us came together and, and to form the National Consumer Association. It has evolved over, over, over the years, and then we have even reached the, the stage of trying to get legislation, try to get things going, and so that we'll be able to give the consumer better protection and, and greater rights in the things that the, the service has been provided for them. And not just that you provide them, just pay and finish that. So it, the, the National <coughs> Consumer Association is to the champion the cause of more of the defenseless. So if, if I am, a, a, as a layperson, why should I join your organization? It is important because the national community is supposed to be an independent organization. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be able to meet its, 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 its needs, its expenses, like the office rent and the, the phones and the mm -hmm. things. So therefore, when a person joins, number one, you, um, um, when you, the more person you have the strength is, you, the more person you have, the more strength you, 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 you have. You're able to, to, to have a, a, a greater voice in the, in the market and in the world and, and, and also can shape to lobby the government policies. So, so by joining the National Consumer Association, you're going to strengthen their hands. Numbers going to force the government to, to do the, what, what, what's supposed to be done. And the, the, the consumer themselves ha will have greater say mm -hmm. in what's happening outside. Okay, and Misty, but, Jack, if, I, if I could just add, all of this really stems from, again, uh, uh, the treaties that we signed. We signed on to the revised treaty of Shagar mm -hmm. And on the chapter 8 of that revised treaty, it obliges governments to set up those frameworks mm -hmm. that will protect the consumer mm -hmm. and to also um, call for a cause for action for the, the consumer organizations like the National Consumer 
Authority, mm -hmm. National Consumers Association, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it mandates government to ensure that those frameworks are in place to allow for uh, transparency, to allow for consumer issues to be aired, consumer issues to be voiced, consumer issues to be advocated about. This is what the NCA really is, an mm -hmm. advocacy and lobbying organization, which is different from Consumer Affairs Department, right. where we're more of the regulatory and administrative and um, of, um, of um, consumer protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, back to your department, Mr. Simon, what sort of services does your department offer? What, if I call the Consumer Affairs Department, what sort of things can I hope to gain from that? Essentially, the Consumer Affairs Department performs really uh, two primary roles, really. One of consumer education and empowerment, Mm -hmm. as um, one of consumer protection, where we actually seek redress on behalf of consumers whose rights may have been infringed upon. So if you call the Consumer Affairs Department, um, we can offer training in mm -hmm. terms of um, empowering the consumers. Uh, we've worked as well with businesses, um, empowering businesses to understand the rights of consumers and to, okay. um, to ensure that they actually don't infringe on those rights, and they actually understand their obligations as a supplier as well. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, we have uh, re re uh, offered redress to quite a bit of consumers who may have been aggrieved by either by some product or, or they um, not satisfied with some service. Mm -hmm. And of course, we will require uh, our intervention in terms of bringing about um, redress for the com for the complaints. Now, you mentioned redress. What, what forms of redress can one hope to gain if they feel like they have been wronged by a, a product or a service? Uh, essentially, there are four forms of redress. So one could uh, easy, uh, get a refund, mm -hmm. of course, the, if it is a product and the product is faulty. It could be the, an, an exchange or the product could be repaired. Mm -hmm. And of course, the last form really of redress is that uh, it could be in the form of a credit note or what we call an IOU note, that mm -hmm. um, the credit note that you can come and redeem within three to six months and get something else of value there about. So essentially, there are four forms of redress which the consumer can benefit from. And <coughs> as you uh, speaking a little bit more on redress, is the consumer protected in this entire process? The consumer needs greater protection. Mm -hmm. I would say that. The consumer has a measure of protection. Um, there are the legislations that are in fact in place to protect the consumer. So for instance, you have the Standards Act. Mm -hmm. Under the Standards Act, uh, you have um, products must meet a certain particular standard. And if they are not, then of course the, the, the Bureau of Standards can act. Mm -hmm. You have as well under various pieces of legislation, so the Health um, Act that uh, if a product is, uh, uh, um, is going to impact the consumer health, right, then they fact there is legislation for that. Um, you have as well under the Price Control Act, which my department actually administers, if a product Seems is sold, uh, if a product is in fact sold above uh, the control price, then of course we have, um, we can act on behalf of the consumer. Mm -hmm. um, under the, as you said, the mm -hmm. Sales of Goods Act, um, the Sales of Goods Ordinance, um, the product, the consumer can, of course, get redress and get, get some sort of support. But of course, it has to go through the, the civil, um, civil proceedings. Mm -hmm. yeah, but the, yes, the consumer is protected in the mix of all of all of them. But more, it, I will say that more legislation is in fact needed mm -hmm. in terms of strengthening, uh, because every day the dynamics are changing. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we have um, consumers. Uh, there's a cry for call, a call for consumers to be protected in cyberspace. There are not many cyberspace laws, and we do, we do a lot of shopping online, mm -hmm. all right? Um, the consumer right, right out has moved away from the brick and mortar business and has a greater presence online. So there is need now for even greater legislation in terms of protecting the consumer. Okay, uh, this is all very fascinating, and I, as soon as we come back, because we're due for a break, I want to talk about the investigation process, and as you mentioned, the, um, the, a lot of the online shopping that people do nowadays. I want to talk about that with regards to both of your organizations. Mm -hmm. This is Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned to this station. We'll be right back in a moment. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. 
This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm Jacques Kingston Compton. I'm here with the Director of Consumer Affairs, Mr. Guillaume Simon, and the former president of the National Consumers Association, Mr. Hubert James. So before we went on break, we were you, you were continuing your, your thoughts on the um, on the cyber um, and online shopping with regards to your department. What um, what has changed? due to that, this new avenue for shopping? What has changed really is that um, the consumer now has direct access to markets. Um, what has changed is that the redress mechanisms have to be looked at because the fact that the consumer can, through Amazon, eBay, or uh, any platform, online platform, purchase, if the consumer now has an issue in terms of uh, shorty, uh, shorty product, the redress is not clear. Who actually takes responsibility? If a product is damaged or doesn't come through the courier, who actually takes responsibility? So it, it creates a lot of uh, ambiguities, and that's why we're saying that there is a need now to have clear legislation in terms of um, how we can address some of those ambiguities as it as it stands. Yeah. Are, are, is your department currently working on any legislation in the future? There, there are some legislations that have already been passed in terms of um, by the government in terms of uh, one the, the um, cyber cyber crimes mm -hmm. um, act uh, the data protection act mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and on, and of course um, there are there is need now to also look at perhaps regulations in terms of how and more legislation but but clearly the con the, the discussion needs to continue in terms of the exposure of, of consumers and of course the need now to be protected so one of the things that 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 really and truly that we do we do is to be on the offensive information the provision of information mm -hmm. to empower consumers that when they're transacting actually online there are certain things that they need to do there are certain things that they need to safeguard mm -hmm. you know your credit card information you know, um, how you give information, you know, which companies are trusted products. So uh, empowering consumers will reduce the need now to, uh, they, they will mitigate really the, the, the exposure to, to, to risk of internet fraud or any other, any other um, vulnerabilities on the, on the on online, on online pl platform. Okay, uh, this is a question both of you can answer. Yeah, can, you, can you, can yeah, you, go ahead. Yeah, just about that, um, with the online shopping, mm -hmm. What we have attempted to do is to set the linkages between us and our counterparts overseas. Mm -hmm. So if something you buy something on online, or what you call cross-border shopping, mm -hmm. you we should be able to call to call one of our our counterpart overseas and say, look, we have that that, that situation. This is the mother company investigated that for us, and that's, and that network also through we have um, Consumer International. Mm -hmm. which also can, can <coughs> give help in the same way if we need to get assistance to assist somebody who may have purchased some, something online and the person not satisfied <coughs> that the, the service that was given or the goods that, that they purchased. Mm -hmm. So with this kind of network, that's why we produce to, 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 to um, um, Consumer International. They give information, they, they assist in the things that, that, that we need to get from if we cannot do it even our own budget or jurisdiction. Uh, now, this is something, again, you can both answer. Could you speak about the investigation process for both of your organizations? If I, I as a consumer, I have issue with, let's say, that pamphlet for some reason, what, what is the process when I call either the, the National Consumers Association mm -hmm. or the Consumer Affairs Department? 
I think both of the organizations has, has a form that you fill, a complaint form. Mm -hmm. You fill the form, you put the information in. If it is something that can be let with immediately, we, we take it up right away, call the, the, the company and, start, and try to find out what's, what's happened. Uh, well, the person gave you a contract to print the pamphlet and the person said, so, so you did not live to the expectation of the person. Mm -hmm. And we find out how we, how we can deal with it, whether as Mr. Simon had already said, whether they're going to give the person back the money or whether they're going to correct or print it or whatever has to we, we, we have to also find a solution. Mm -hmm. How are we going to handle that so that we can maintain that uh, harmonious relationship? I all do our right supposed to advocate to make sure justice has been done. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the two organizations, sometimes if certain things every time we call them, the consumers, so they call us. So we work in hand in hand. To, to complement each other so we can give the consumer a greater strength in the thing they want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, Jack, that is actually one of the um, services that we actually provide at the Consumer Affairs Department. We have a unit, Complaints and Investigations Unit, specifically charged mm -hmm. with that responsibility of redressing consumer, consumer issues. And the process is simple, really, that, that you, you come in or, or you call and you come in and, and you fill out a, a form so we have to get a statement of fact in terms of uh, what the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, we have a cadre of officers who um, uh, uh, investigate on, your, on, on the consumer's behalf. Mm -hmm. So the point of intervention at, at, at my department can only start if the consumer lodges a complaint and when they do then we approach the, the, the business persons. And I can tell you that um, about 87% of, of the time we usually solve those um, complaints. So the process is again come in, lodge a complaint, um, have all your proof of, of purchase, uh, mm -hmm. if you have your invoice, your receipt, mm -hmm. there must be that link between you and the product and the supplier. You know, if it is a, a product or if it is a service, there must be that link and that proof of that receipt is very critical in terms of um, identifying proof that there was a, a consumer transaction between the two parties, the supplier and the consumer. Mm -hmm. and, and the department will lend support in terms of trying to get redress for, for the consumer. Okay. We are due for one more break. And when we come back, I want you to talk about the methods that you use to um, educate the public and how you proactively safeguard the rights of the consumer. I know a couple of other things that I want to touch on. Your hair on issues and answers. I'm Jacques Kingston Compton. Please stay tuned to the station. We'll be back in a moment. Hypertension is a deadly disease that is common in St. Lucia. We depend on blood pressure monitors to determine if our blood pressure is too high or too low. Should a reading on these measuring devices be incorrect, we are literally putting our lives at risk. Doctors, caregivers, and patients. Get your blood pressure meters verified by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to ensure the accuracy of measuring devices. Look for the green pass sticker on the blood pressure meter at your next visit to the doctor. The correct reading can mean the difference between life and death. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.lc. .org.lc, St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm Jacques Kingston Compton. Here with me is Director of Consumer Affairs, Mr. Guillaume Simon, and former President of the National Consumers Association, Mr. Hubert James. Uh, before we left, I wanted to talk to you gentlemen about the avenues that you use or methods that you use to educate the public on their consumer rights. Could you, uh, well, could you both speak on that a little bit? Yeah, I'll let you both go first. <laughs> okay. He let me go first. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the consumers, the way we have, like we said, we have the workshops, we have pamphlets, we have radio programs, mm -hmm. we do outreach programs to the schools and communities. We the, the, the come to the office and seek information, which we give them information on the whatever topic they, 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 they ask, the mm -hmm. thing they ask for. We... We used to have a radio program where we, we um, which was that thing we need to do to reintroduce, mm -hmm. to continue to disseminate information to the, to the, to the consumers outside there. Because um, some of the consumers don't understand and know their rights, and as a result of that, a lot of things escape them. Mm -hmm. And it's after the fact that, well, I did not know. Mm -hmm. I did that. <coughs> so we need to, to bring back those radio programs to ensure that information are been given to the have upfront of information so when they go out they know exactly what to look for. 
Mm -hmm. Mr. Simon? I mean, information is key. <coughs> information is key. We, we have a com, uh, consumer education services unit within the department, and mm -hmm. this unit does, um, has an outreach program. One of the targets are the schools. So we've targeted uh, schools, primary and secondary schools, in terms of um, imparting or empowering the consumer as to their rights, as to some of the challenges of operating within the, the, um, the world that we live, and we live in a digital world right now. Mm -hmm. um, we also, again, pamphlets, brochures. Um, we also do media, certain media appearances. Mm -hmm. in terms of impact information. But we also have some one-on-one -on -one discussions in communities. So we go out to the various communities and of course have one-on-one -on -one dialogue with the communities. So as part of the information dissemination, as part of giving, um, 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 empowering consumers to take charge really um, of the situation, of know their rights, and of course, the more importantly, their responsibilities as a consumer. Now, you both are very soon have an event coming up called World Consumer Rights Day. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that day? What activities can we expect on the day? Well, World Consumer Rights Day is, is a day set out, March 15th, which is calendared to, to, to join in solidarity. Where all consumer organizations join in solidarity in highlighting issues that impact consumers mm -hmm. um, and under a chosen theme. This really is affiliated to uh, the umbrella organization for consumers, which is Consumers International. And this year, they have uh, uh, adopted a theme, Trusted Smart Products. Um, essentially, this theme speaks to the pervasiveness of smart products in the, in the society that we live right now. Mm -hmm. um, everything that we do, we interface with smart products. And there are opportunities for consumers in terms of leveraging their, 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 their quality of life, but there are also numerous challenges and we need to be aware of some of those challenges that consumers face. Um, so the, the theme Trusted Spot Products really highlights some, uh, uh, some of the absences as I spoke to earlier in terms of the legislations and, and, and some of the, um, uh, the, the, most, most of the challenges. Uh, of, of consumers of consumers operating in a digital age and so one of the one of the activities that we have in fact um, come up with for this year and collaborating between my department and the National Consumers Association is that on World Consumer Rights Day we'll have a, a live panel discussion where we discuss some of the issues the opportunities and the challenges that the consumers that the solution consumer faces today operating in the digital age we also will be going out into the communities because we have a month of activities to meet with some of the, 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 the communities and mm -hmm. meet with persons and of course get from them uh, some of the areas which they would like us to focus on. Um, we, the minister will be addressing, of course, uh, the nation on World Consumer Rights Day in terms of where the policy of the government is. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, um, we, we have a number of radio programs um, jointly with the National Consumers Association mm -hmm. in terms of getting it out there that um, need for consumers to be more conscious of their rights. Um, we, we have a, uh, we're trying to make that appeal to um, the business community mm -hmm. to, to show an appreciation of, of, of for the consumer on that day. Um, whatever, form, whatever form, you know, to, just, just to recognize that day as World Consumer Rights Day and to sort of uh, maybe give back. Yeah, like a Black Friday. <laughs> give, give the consumer something <laughs> based on the, 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 co the contribution they have made to the business over the years. Because mm -hmm. your, your consumer is the most important asset to any business in the country. Mm -hmm. Without a consumer to, to purchase the, the products you are selling or the service that you're giving, you just go out of business, you're going to waste your money. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if over the years you're able to expand, you're being to flourish and succeed in you know, all the thing you're doing, there's nothing wrong that we can calendar that at the every year you have like a little black uh, unfortunately this had fallen on a friday mm -hmm. so you can give the consumers something to show i appreciate you as my customers and my business because of, of you i'll be able to achieve a lot of things in my life because of your contribution and participation in my business so i think it would be a very good and nice gesture to the to the to the consumers that the, the, the private sector can say look we have you have contributed to my to my development 
Mm -hmm. I'm giving you that as a Black Friday, whether 20%, 50%, a half price, mm -hmm. or buy one, get one free, or, or something to show that I appreciate you for what you have done for me, the form of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Now, you, um, it's an interesting theme for this year, uh, but could, could you be a little more um, detailed or specific about what exactly a, a smart product is and what challenges that both of your departments may face with regards to the emergence of smart products? Well, you know smart products, your telephone, your television, you know, like you, which one you have smart, a, smart, a smart TV or, or mm. a dirty TV. Mm -hmm. So you have, your, you have your smart TV, you have your smart car. <laughs> now these days the, the, the cars you can you want to your head to reverse you just press on that that you see you, you see behind you and the car tell you if you're getting close to something you i mean a lot of these things are just a thing we, we we use every every day i mean now people have have gadget on the body when they go in and etc how much calorie you you, you 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 burn how many steps you have taken so all these things are part of us it, it, it is within us mm -hmm. you, you have the internet you, you, you have youtube but they just anything you just go down you you speak to the phone and they give you the answer so mm -hmm. so <laughs> these smart products are all around us and we mm -hmm. and some people can even do without it so people mm -hmm. in church now that they go to church for a phone without have a bible and then they get to get the bible on the phone so the smart products is everywhere we turn just how mm -hmm. we may have flash of a smart flushing dollets <laughs> Things are unfolding, and we, we, cannot, we cannot escape it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, but um, this thing also have the, the, the downside. And uh, the downside mm -hmm. is that uh, you may buy a smart car, and you don't have the right person, to, uh, the person to, to, to fix this vehicle for you. Mm -hmm. And probably just because of one simple item, uh, maybe problem in the vehicle, you may have to sit down for months because you may have somebody to send somebody down to fix it for you. So while we are promoting and, and feel comfortable in moving into <coughs> the, 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 the smart world, and if it can be done for us without we even we make any great effort, it has its, its, its downs. Are we prepared, or do we have the, 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 the requisites to correct those things when they happened? You, 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 you know now. Now I think the what they advertise now, um, high definition on on, on <coughs> the television thing. So, mm -hmm. do we have the right set of persons to, to deliver that if something happened? So mm -hmm. it, it, it is all around us, and we, we are moving rapidly into it and don't think back. If we don't be on that, the, the, the phones, I mean, if you just, that phone go, go, go bad and just dump it somewhere, it contaminates your environment. Now, what's funny is, I know some time back they had asked if the phone is not working, you bring it back to the, to the company where you bought it from mm -hmm. so they can dispose it properly. Mm -hmm. But people don't take me to that, just drop it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So our environment, even when we move to all these smart things and all this new technology, it has its, I mean, it's a downside of it. So, so we need to find a way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we're coming a little bit to the end of the program. Look, Mr. Simon, uh, do you have anything to add? To but just, just wanted to say that, um, yes, we are immersed with smart technologies all around us right now. Um, but it really calls for us to be even more responsible, understand what we're going to. Right now, you have a telephone or your TV. Everything is connected to the internet. So, so there's that convergence right now of everything, TV, radio, everything on the one thing, your phone, mm -hmm. your, sm your smartphone. Mm -hmm. It can turn off your TV. It can turn off your, your, your um, it can enter, you can use it to go to, to, to do online banking, everything. And there's a lot of information stored on smart products. The challenge and the unknown is sometimes what happens to that data? that is stored on your smart products, because smart products store a lot of information. You put your TV on, and you can go back in the settings and see what you, what you saw two years ago, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You have your car, I mean, there are some cars right now, you can start it from your phone, okay? And um, we, th we see thieves right now are using smart technologies to enter high-tech vehicles and mm -hmm. steal them. So the message really is that as a consumer, we need to understand the smart technology that's around us and how to use it in a responsible way so as to not compromise our information, so as to not compromise our, ourselves. Um, when we, we look at the theme, and the, like you said, it's a very interesting theme, mm -hmm. smart products, trusted smart products. Last year, was it 2017, the banks made, the bank said we, we ha had a policy that we close off at 2 o'clock and no longer at 3 o'clock. And they encourage persons to get 
to smart cards. So you now can go through the ATM. There's a responsibility in using those products as well. And who guarantees that those products, the information stored from them, cannot be retrieved by anybody else? Mm. Because once you put that information in there, it stores some the information. Who has access to that information? So these are some of the issues that we want to raise in terms of the consumer. And the message really to them is really, know what information that you want to share. And of course, uh, there's something times that you, you don't have a choice in terms of sharing your information. If you right now have to buy a new phone, you have to put in your Google account, you have to put in mm -hmm. some information mm -hmm. even before. You have to accept. Sometimes we don't know what we accept. Mm -hmm. And we can accept to share all our information because information now is a commodity. So it's bought and sold. Very interesting topic indeed. And let me give you one last for you. But there was, I went to, to, the, the, to the bank, the ATM, and there was somebody in the, before me, mm. and the person withdrew some money, but the machine did not release the, the, the money, so he canceled the thing and he left. And as soon as he left, the, the, the machine released the, 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 the money. It was $1,600, hmm. it is the money. It's a good, I knew the person and, and I, I was there, so I took the money and I gave it to the teller and the bank said, look, this person, when the person didn't give out the money, it released afterwards, so here is the money again. The person went to view for, to withdraw that same money in view for. He was going to if you fought and you needed the money, but he didn't give you the money at all, so the machine yeah. delayed. Now, if there was somebody else who was there, they would just take the money from the pocket and, and go with it. So, therefore, it, even in using the ATM machine, we may be very careful. We just turn our back after you finish your transaction. Make sure you see that it, it tells you, thank you very much, goodbye, before you, <coughs> you, you just leave it and go, because it may release you more of your money. And, 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 and unfortunately, I was, I, was the, I was the one there. So therefore, the money kept going. Somebody could take the money, and the person said, but I, I didn't get the money. And the bank said, yes, you were right. So both of them will be right, but somebody, somebody's wrong. Because the machine did not do the service of smooth that the person wanted it. Mm -hmm. So when we're using those smart products, we have to be very careful that we show sure that, that what we did is very correct. Indeed, the challenges we have to think yes. of. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank both of you gentlemen for coming to speak with me about consumer rights. I am Jacques Kingston Compton. You're watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned to the station for more programming. All right, so we just have to.